Welcome to the AMC Report. I'm Airman First Class, Kimberly O'Brien. We've all heard about Ebola, but what is the military doing to combat the virus? Airman First Class, Daniel Fernandez, takes us to Brook Army Medical Center, where personnel are learning how to respond to the disease. A joint team of 30 U.S. military doctors, nurses, and specialized medical trainers have gathered here at Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas. They've been selected to train as a medical support team that could, if necessary, provide assistance to civilian medical professionals in the event of another Ebola case here in the United States. The military has extensive experience in working with our civilian counterparts. Um, in clinical practice, we do that on a daily basis. Instructors from the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases will spend the next few days training this team to the same standards used by the Center for Disease Control to identify, contain, and eliminate potential outbreaks of the Ebola virus when needed and we're going to be trained well and uh, exercised uh, to the point where we're going to be able to deliver excellent care if, uh, if the call comes around. After training, the team members will return to their home stations but stand ready to deploy within 72 hours to anywhere in the states as requested by the Department of Health and Human Services. From Brook Army Medical Center, I'm Airman First Class Daniel Fernandez. While medical personnel stay ready to protect us here in the states, Airmen at Dias Air Force Base are on their way to Africa to support people impacted by this disease. Dias Airmen deployed October 29th in support of Operation United Assistance, the Department of Defense's role in a comprehensive effort led by the U.S. Agency for International Development to respond and contain the outbreak of the Ebola virus in West Africa. Dias Airmen deploying to West Africa are not expected to perform missions that put them at risk of contracting Ebola. However, there are protective measures in place before, during, and after the deployment to safeguard airmen from contracting an infectious disease. Before departing, Dias Airmen gathered for a pre-deployment briefing with Air Mobility Command Surgeon, Brigadier General Dr. Corey Cornum, and infectious disease physician, Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Conger. General Cornum explained the DOD's mission and emphasized that no deploying members will provide direct care to Ebola patients. We're going down there to build hospitals and Ebola treatment units is what they're calling them um, and help with the infrastructure but not take care of patients. With airmen fully prepared and cargo loaded, deployers boarded for an early morning departure. Deploying airmen will provide humanitarian support by moving cargo and needed supplies. Reporting from Dias Air Force Base, Texas, I'm Airman First Class Audrey Harmon-Smith. Pilots fly important missions every day but one pilot reflects on a special humanitarian mission she flew in support of Operation United Assistance to combat the outbreak of the Ebola virus. My name is Captain CJ Tetrick and I'm a pilot of the C-17 at Joint Base Charleston. What made this a special C-17 mission is that none of us had ever been to Liberia and none of us had ever carried maybe some of those types of cargo. And yet, on a moment's notice, two days to be exact, we were on our way and able to successfully execute a mission into a challenging environment. For me, it's my first humanitarian mission, and I will, I will always remember it as having that, that special urgency, feeling like you're part of something bigger than yourself. Everyone knows that this could become a much larger problem very quickly. And being able to, to deliver this as one part of a larger operation has a good feeling that maybe we're going to be able to halt this. That's it for this edition of the AMC Report. To view the full versions of these stories, go to www.youtube.com slash user slash mobility airmen. And if you know of a unit or airman on your base who deserves to be featured, contact your local public affairs office.